Well, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Jared Malat. I'm here with my good friend, Mateo Coiz. This is The Cultist, episode 34. We're going to call this the Isaiah Rogers edition. And hey, to his credit, he did make a big play to game. Play yeah, to he, game, saved, right? he saved this from, a, from an embarrassing loss. He saved, like, he really saved Naheem Hines. He saved, I mean, Naheem Hines should buy that guy <laughs> at least to watch. You know, he's, yeah. that was a big save. For those uh, uninitiated, uh, Mateo and I are going to talk about the Colts' first regular season game here. If you like the content that we produce, please follow my YouTube channel. That's about it. And fortunately for the Colts, uh, as I just got done saying a few minutes ago, the Colts, in my eyes, probably played their worst game they'll play all year. And yeah. if you really think about what Houston was doing, that's about as good as it gets uh, out of their quarterback run game had two guys with double digit carries like number one wide receiver produced you forced turnovers you you won the turnover battle right and you just weren't able to get a win out of that um so fortunately hopefully obviously uh the colts don't don't have any more games like that right uh um, yeah but i guess if you're we gonna have, you know. i guess if you're gonna and you get a tie out of it i think that's if there is a silver lining, it's that your work, yeah. your absolute worst you could have possibly played still yeah, resulted well, in a tie. Yeah. Well, first of all, uh, first of all, you know, before we get started, I want to like thank you and tell you like how much I appreciate and how happy I am to be like once again, another season covering the Colts. Like it means the world to me to be here with you. Yeah. I mean, football season is back and that is like at least for me, it's the happiest Sunday of the year. It's the it's yeah. the Sunday where it finally where the way it finally ends. Mm -hmm. And I believe that in my like this hurt way more because if if Blankenships makes the kick, you know, we win and that's uh, you know, we escape with a win. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's a, that's the only a lot of pressure for a young a young kicker though, right? Yeah, if you ask me though, he he, he has to be out. He just the kick and the, the two kick off out of bounds. Yeah. the fact that he can make a kick over 50 he, he he missed some very big kicks last year too you know against the ravens mm -hmm. against the backs i believe too you have to start saying okay like this might not be the guy you gave him like plenty of chances it's not like he didn't get a chance mm -hmm. and I'm, I'm definitely not putting the entire blame for the tie on him like it's nowhere close to being entirely his fault if he yeah. makes that kick we win but it's not right. his fault right and I was I was pretty livid, you know. We have a, a Discord chat among the among the writers, and I got livid in the first half. I was like, I was really mad. It was, obviously, it's gonna be frustrating, right? The Colts expected to win this game on the road. They were the largest favorite of all of the all sixteen games this week. Uh, the Colts were supposed to beat uh, Houston. Uh, they were an eight and a half point favorite going into this game. Um, yeah. And and as the week went on, the the spread actually got bigger. And I speak in terms of gambling because it kind of makes sense, right? Yeah. The more information you got closer to this game, the more certain it seemed. It seemed like the Colts are going to be firing on all cylinders, and it seems like Houston's just lacking firepower and depth. And then yeah. I found it super interesting that we talked about this last week about how OJ Howard is going to have to step in and play yeah. number two tight end. Yeah, and you notice it. his two catches resulted in two touchdowns and is absolutely the difference in the game. And if you think about it, obviously, his you take away O.J. Howard and the Colts blow them out and it, they're anemic as hell on offense, right? Um, yeah, I, I so just... It's just crazy. It's hard to it's hard to prepare for someone when you can't watch them work within this offense. You don't know how they're going to be utilized. You're just kind of left to guess, right? Yeah, and they they I like his two touchdowns were you know long coverages. The second one was more evident where Bobby Okereke just stays like flat in the middle, and OJ Howard goes right by him. I will you know the entire secondary I believe had a really bad game. You know the safeties, the the linebackers in coverage were not good, especially in the red zone. I like what I saw from Gilmore and the the other. His name is kind of hard to pronounce. He played a lot. Uh, Brendan. For Sison, I don't oh, know. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. I like what I saw from him. Kenny, Kenny struggled. He got like two flags that were at the very least questionable. Right. 
two DPIs that, in my opinion, you know, I might be biased because I'm a Colts fan and everything, sure. but those were not flags, in my opinion. Right. And, you know, I don't know, you, you were a quarterback, you, you really understand the quarterback position. I just, I, I did not like what I saw from Ryan too much. So the, the first thing that ultimately, like, fired me up was everybody right now is saying, like, Rodrigo Blankenship should be fired. But yeah. nobody's saying you're paying Matt Ryan a hell of a lot of money for him to fumble four snaps on you and throw in the most obvious interception that he will throw all season long directly into the hands of Jerry Hughes, who's just five feet away from you. So the reality in this yeah. situation is I follow the money. So that's why I'm, man, I have a real hard time blaming Rodrigo Blankenship. I feel like he was put in an undue, stre- an undue stressful situation and forced to be the man when the reality of the situation is you paid Matt Ryan to be the man. I'm sorry, yeah. you paid Matt Ryan to do that, and he failed today. He fumbled the snap. I'm sorry, at any level of football, the center quarterback exchange is paramount, and if you don't get that right, you ain't winning shit. So the reality of the situation is I think the blame is misplaced. I think the Rodrigo Blankenship is probably in a dark spot because, like you said, man, he's missed some pressure kicks, but here's the fucking problem. If your quarterback played better, he wouldn't be in those spots. How yeah. about he say that? How about Matt Ryan get your shit together? How about Matt Ryan, you sucked on the road today? How about anytime you have to throw 50 times, you're losing? We should have done know that. Anytime your star running back has 30 carries and 35 of your like 80 plays, he touched the ball. You're losing that game. You should have lost that game and got lucky. You got lucky that you have enough talent that it carried you all the way to overtime. That's that's yeah. what really happened today. So we keep blaming Rodrigo Blankenship. That boy don't make enough money for you to put all that blame on him, and it belongs squarely on Matt Ryan. He gets paid all yeah. that money. Where was Yannick Ngakwe, by the way? How about how about Matt Ryan and Yannick Ngakwe? How about the big money? Braden, Braden Smith. Braden Smith got that big extension. He got yeah. toasted by Jerry Hughes, who is not to discredit him, but he's like 33, picked off of the street. Hey, he is uh, the one that got away. The yeah, the one. Yeah, he ha- he had a great career with the Bills. You know, mm-hmm. big respect to him. But he's like on the downside of that. Yeah. He's not playing for the Texans. Braden Smith, you know, the guy you're giving him like what? What is it? Like seventy-two million dollars? Yeah, you're paying him like top right tackle money, and he got owned all game. He started off really slow. Yeah, where was he? Oh, I think I think the Colts are overworking themselves. Because I think they're the be- the best team on the field pretty frequently, but it's like they don't have it when they need it. Yeah. And I don't know what it is to you, but it is making a key catch. It is having a key burst. It is what Jonathan Taylor has very clearly. Michael Pittman has it. Michael Pittman has Michael it. Pittman has it. Quinn Those Nelson big, has yeah. it. You know, there there are guys on the team that have it, but, but you know, Alex I, Pierce. I don't want to bang on the guy. He was nah, he's a rookie. NFL game. Yeah, he's first a rookie. NFL game, man. Sorry. But he makes game, that game, makes game that winning catch. catch, right? Yeah, but I, of course, I mean, he's a rookie. He's having his first game of the of his career. So in no no way I'm blaming him. No way I'm putting the loss on him. But that's a play that has to be made. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it sucks he didn't make it, but yeah, I, no, I, have, I have plenty of patience with rookies. Like, I understand what it must be to be like, you know, first NFL game. Yep. So I'm going easy on him for now. Yeah. But that also sucked, you know, the, the fourth and goal. Like, you remember last year where, you know, against the Rams and against the Seahawks, we had, like, several, like, first and goal at the one, and we came up short. I believe, I remember yeah. that was a, a recurrent theme last season. And we are, it's, you know, in my opinion, when the same problems repeat themselves over and over again, where we are having the exact same problems as last season, in my opinion, that falls on the head coach. Oh, that sure. is on the coach. Yeah. And, and, that, and that's that's what I would say, too. The the play calling leading up to that opening drive where they end up going for it on fourth down and they put basically 10 players on the field because they put Matt Ryan out at split wide. And it was like, so you're basically playing 10 on 11 here. And then you're obviously, very obviously handing it off. Your two impact players are next to each other. So I don't know about anybody else, but like I could have, that was telegraphed as hell. Um, so not only were you down a man, on the whole play, if you go back and watch the fourth down 
we didn't have numbers on our offensive line because you had two running backs in the backfield, an H back and two wide to the left. That means you only had six down linemen. They had yeah. like nine people on the line. They telegraphed the hell out of that. And then they just let them tackle us. And this is the big problem I have. Like in football, it's a super dangerous sport, right? They got to pay a ton of money, right? In, in order yeah, to play the sport, play, yeah. yeah, these guys get paid a ton of money to play it because it's yeah. super dangerous. And like, if it's that, if it's that goddamn dangerous, how about we address our run fit on a fourth and goal attempt and don't take our quarterback that got us all the way down there completely out of the play and then force ourselves to play short in a bad run fit situation and a very obvious run down yeah. where like a dead giveaway they're giving the that's snapping the ball directly to Naheem Hines and then he's in some sort of option situation with Jonathan Taylor I could have told you that before the ball is snapped right and that's the other problem is I'm an amateur I'm a nobody I'm probably going to coach on this level but I can promise you it was way too obvious way too many times yeah. what the Colts are going to do they're in too high safety Colts are running this football oh look at the run fit they're running the ball right so it's it goes both ways, right? So it's a, on the one hand, you can't fuck yourself. And, and oh, there's they got three more down linemen on the defensive line than we have on the offense to block them. Oh, they're going to eat up a run all day long. This ball belongs out wide, right? We didn't even think about that. And that was the bigger problem I had with the play is there was nothing to draw the defense toward yeah, Matt I'll Ryan. Wait, yeah away from the line of scrimmage where the Colts were giving up numbers, right? So that's like the big thing in that I'll, I'll make sure I try to remember. First of all, when you have the ball in scoring position with 51 seconds left and three fucking timeouts and you get a first down, guess what we do? We clock that motherfucker. That's what we do. And we go, whoa, 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 we're in scoring position. We can score and get and get the ball back and score again and double up on them and win this football game. And then what did we do instead? We let the clock run for five seconds, ran a play, and called a timeout. That's bad clock management, bad yeah. personnel management. How about that? How about how about that? Right. Um, so it, it's a million things that aren't me blaming your kicker. Right. You put your kicker in a bad position where he has to do this thing, or we or we are going to overtime, or we're going to lose. Right. Yeah, and when you but... keep putting someone in that situation. When they're like two, three years into a career, they ain't going to make it. He ain't going to make it. And that is not his fault. That's your coach's fault. Your coach keeps putting that young kicker in that situation. And the reality of the situation is, is the coach, he kind of has the kicker as the out. Ah, can't handle the pressure. No, your poor game management and your poor, poor personnel management put too much pressure on a young kicker. That's what this yeah. the story is going to be. We, Rodrigo Blankenship did not fail at his job. Frank Reich failed to property, properly utilize the weapons on his team. Because I honestly can still say Colts are like way more talented than the team that they just tied with. Yeah. And yeah. any any time that... the talent is discernible, like the, the human eye can say like the Colts are better than them. Yeah, not even I, I believe that not even Texan fans would argue that the Colts are the better football team. Like not even the most like obnoxious Texans fan has, you know, solid grounds for saying our team is better than yours. There's just no way. Right. And it was seen on the field today. Like you it, it was clear that the Colts were more talented, but they just kept like shooting themselves in the foot, making stupid mistakes, making like bad decisions, bad plays, failed executions. Yeah. Like Literally, just, literally, they Matt Ryan dropped the ball. And yeah, the Colts. They literally dropped and, the ball. They you know, snapped the ball, and they didn't do anything, and it ended up on the ground, and like people had to fall on it, right? Yeah. Like that's the you the the metaphor for this game is we dropped the ball, and yeah, it started and, at Matt Ryan. It can't you can't be like I said, can't be blaming rookie wide receivers, can't be blaming young yeah. kickers that you've continually put in stressful situations and forced to win you a football game when that's not his goddamn job. That's not yeah, your kicker's I'm, job. It's your quarterback's job to continually put you in a scoring position and to score touchdowns. And when you don't do that and you have to continually rely on your kicker, and then also I'd add when you chase points early in games, that tells your yeah, kicker you don't good. trust yeah. him. And then so when the Colts have it fourth down from like the four early on, and I'm thinking this game could come down to points. I literally wrote an article four days ago where I said, hey, I actually – if I was going to bet on this game, I would bet again. I would not bet the Colts to cover the spread here because Houston's going to be game at home, especially early in the season when they have all the, all of the people they're going to have. 
this is the best they're going to look until they start having injuries. And then this is all downhill from there. Cause they don't have a lot of depth outside that. Remember I wrote that article. Yeah. And I said that on last week's podcast too. And then you watch the game today and you realize who is the only Houston Texan that had a good game today. Cooks. David, yeah. Cooks Mills had a really good game. I believe. I mean, 6.4 yards per completion is not, yeah. not great. You know, and so I think he was dinking yeah, and dunking. Yeah. I also like, I really like the Jonathan Greenard. You remember we talked about him. He's the guy that had to stop on fourth down. And he's a player that I re I really think that the Texans got a gem in him. Third round draft pick. I, I think he's a really good edge rusher and a player I would definitely like the Colts to have. Yeah, and, and and like I said, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna keep coming back around to like what you know when we go game to game, you know, and we're I'm, I have NFL Network, so I'm probably gonna watch this Colts game probably three or four times for the next one, and I'm really interested to see if I can pinpoint what Houston's game plan was against our fronts, and then I want to look at what the what did the Colts do to address the fact that Braden Smith was getting a shit rocked. Did they actually put someone over there, put in, slide an H over to that side, get a chip on that guy to try to help Braden, to give him some confidence that he can handle him one-on-one? -on -one? Did we do that? Or do we make no adjustment and just bullheaded, we're going to just keep doing what we're doing, we're not going to make any adjustments? Because that's what I get the feeling is ego is like a big yeah. part of all of this, right? And, uh, you know, as I get into my coaching career, you know, my thought process is, is I don't know you yet. I need to evaluate my talent, figure out what you're good at as fast as possible. And then we need to put an offense together that is based on you, on, on our depth and what we're good at. Right. Yeah. And when I watch the Colts on offense, sometimes I'm like, I don't think they fucking do that. That's a problem. Like, I don't think they actually know what you're good at. I think they're just out there hooking rocks at people that they're like, ah, this guy could probably play this position. And you're like, that's not, that isn't going to ultimately work for us. Right. Like Ashton Doolin, being the guy late in the game, getting the ball in the end zone, probably not the dude you want out there because he's not in part of your main rotation. So his hands are not ready. He's not yeah. making that sort of catch. And I get it. It was a bang, bang play. And in, in another universe, he catches that shit. And this is this, we won that game. Right. Um, but the, but like I said, bef way before I'm blaming Rodrigo blanket shit for this game, I'm, I'm blaming Matt Ryan for dropping a ball here. Cause I think he should have blown him out. You know, if yeah. you look, if you look at every other statistical category other than turnovers, we beat the shit out of that. We doubled them up in yards. You had a, a running back with 150 yards. Your quarterback for for throwing 50 balls, not great. He did have 352 yards, so it's also important yeah. to know he wasn't standing back there hucking it, right? He was actually playing within the offense. Uh, he wasn't strictly trying to hit the number one receiver. I don't feel like he was like um, doing the sorts of things that Carson Wentz does. Uh, by the way, have to comment about Carson Wentz because people are accusing me of being like a little bit of a hater towards Carson Wentz. Important yeah. to understand that he was losing to Jacksonville at home like all stinking day today. Yes, they won, but he was losing like all day long to them. Just throwing that out there he almost lost to him twice in a row to end a season and to start one you know what i mean like they they came back and won in the end good good for him man it's a good start there in washington again i don't think beating jacksonville at home is something you hang your hat on but divisions is going to be tough for them you know what i mean i think yeah. that, that you know they're not getting over on dallas like no, that. yeah not getting over philadelphia, on like that. philadelphia is a team that i really like yeah so, they're 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 my NFC favorite right now. I like I like yeah. the Eagles a lot. Um, and, and also, I I want to like go back to to something that we also talked about on the Discord channel, where you know uh, I don't know if it's if it was Andrew or who it was, but they said you know like the Patriots also start slow in September, but then and the thing with that I was saying like we don't have the track Frank Reich does not have the same tra track record as Bill Belichick. We are a team that missed the playoff last year because of a single game. And we go out there and we blow like a really good chance to start the season one and oh, you know, you always go about like you never have to underestimate your opponents. It seemed like the Colts, you know, I don't know if they underestimated the Texans, but they just did not seem ready for them. Well, I mean, I mean, 
like like we already beat that drum and i think i think it's pretty clear the colts are a real good study of the opponent but it's hard to game plan for someone that's gonna get injected into a game plan that you did you didn't see that coming i didn't see oj howard getting signed and then being drawn up on on two third and long plays in the red zone and then being mirrored they were it was the same play call as just the other side and they were banking on okariki being a disciplined player and staying where he's supposed to be which is in that spot and not churning turning and chasing and that's why they threw him up because he wasn't in any of their film so okariki had no he's thinking that guy's gonna curl behind me and i'm standing right here right that's what that's yeah. probably what he was thinking. Like, they're not going to send their big tight end into the into the end zone amongst our amongst our secondary. They're, they wouldn't do that. So he just stays there and exposes himself. And all you got to do is throw over his head. They they put that in over the course of their game planning for the week. Hey, Okariki is not Darius Leonard or Shaquille Leonard, right? Like, he's not he's not on his level. So we can we can pick on him a little, right? And if you're going to pick on a player, if you really really are going to be hard on yourself, who would you have picked on? Okariki, like, look at the rest yeah. of the defense is pretty damn good. They got like seven Pro Bowlers, right? And Quiddy Pay had two sacks today, so like, good for him to see a little bit of development. But like I said, for week one, I think uh, we failed to uh, take into account uh, an offensive weapon getting signed, like a tight end or a wide receiver or running back, like close to a game. He might get injected into that game. He might be put in their game plan and become a significant part of their offense. Who knows, right? Like that might yeah. that might be something that you know the Colts think about down the road, and that's why they lost. Because if you think about other than OJ Howard's two catches for touchdowns, what else did they have on offense? Nothing. Seventy-seven yards rushing, like. Oh, yeah. okay. But like outside of two design design pass plays, banking on Okariki playing discipline defense. Okay. That's the only reason we, that you and I aren't sitting here like, hell yeah, we just beat the dog piss out of, out of Houston right now is because it frankly, 20 to six on the road is like, that's a, yeah. that's what I has beaten. Um, and that's what it would have been, you know, and, and also keep in mind, the same thing happened in that Rams game last year where the Colts early in the game drove down and found themselves in a fourth and goal situation in a tie ball yeah, game yeah. and didn't just kick a field goal. And then the ended up being like a field goal was the difference. Right. And so yeah. I, I'm going to keep, I'm going to keep banging that drum. Cause I think it matters right where I, before I ever coach a down of football that matters, I'm able to watch a professional game and and still poke holes in and say, you know, I think, like I said, I keep repeating myself, but I have a minute left in a close game and I have three timeouts and I get a first down. Clock it. Let's talk about this. Yeah. We have five or six plays. We, this is also something we should have practiced the hell out of, right? Um, and then, of course, there's going to be people that want to talk about like the very end of the game. And no, there's no such thing as like a 90 yard play. And the only gripe yeah. I have about that play is that I wish Paris Campbell had like a pitch man, like somebody that he was supposed to get as yeah, far upfield yeah, as you could and turn like, and pitch that bitch and give us an opportunity. Uh, yeah, to but hook, what is it like ladder. a 0.01% chance? So, yeah, I mean, it is what it is. Yeah, it is absolutely what it is. Fortunately, um, this is not the this is game one this is not game 17 um and i think that with uh, i'm I'm thinking about like alec pierce in the same way i thought of quitty pay last year i think last year it's okay you know i i learned watching these guys it's okay to be the man yeah. It's okay to make that catch. Like Alex got to be okay making that catch. Cause last year, what I saw early in Quiddy Pay's career was he'd beat the guy and he'd have the quarterback dead to rights and it shocked him. And he was like, Oh God, like I'm standing on top of the quarterback. I could just kill him right now. Right. Uh, and he didn't make the sack. The ball got away or quarterback got away, whatever. Uh, and late in the season last year, he started to turn it you know, kind of turned a corner and then obviously had two sacks today. Um, I see yeah. the same sort of th- things coming out of Alec Pierce. Um, I, I think that, you know, I watched Cincinnati now for a couple years because they've been kind of making some noise in college football. And yeah. uh, Alec Pierce is a 
consistent contributor. And I think that that's what he'll become. Um, and, and, and also I can still, I can say that and still say the Colts need wide receiver help. Yeah. Yeah. I believe that's, yeah, that's. And I don't think, I don't think it's T Y Hilton. You need somebody that can legitimately take the top off the defense. And I got to wonder with the way they use Paris Campbell, if they believe that he can still do that. Um, Cause I saw him, he's catching stuff over the middle now. Um, yeah. And you know what I mean? And, and, and I get it. He's got to be. He, they've got to be able to do it from just about anywhere. Him and Michael Pittman. Michael Pittman's got to be able to line up anywhere and catch it from anywhere, doing anything. Yeah, it doesn't matter what it is. Yeah, he did. Um, unfortunately, he did that today. So there's a lot. I think there's a lot of lot of bright spots. I think, like I said, like obviously, yeah. A, a quiddy, tie. quiddy pay, quiddy pay. You know, in in overtime, quiddy pay. I, he he showed up. He had a really nice game. Yeah. I, I I thought that was really a bright spot, especially after seeing the defensive line struggle so much throughout the game. Like seeing Quiddy Pay step up in overtime if after a, after a bad kickoff by by Blankenship, that was really, really nice to see. Yeah. But yeah, overall, you know, it's just so so frustrating. Yeah, and I get it. I think that Hot Rod's an easy target here. Yeah, it's yeah, so I in no way I in no way I'm saying like that that is the guy to blame for the loss. Like he, in my opinion, like in my list, I mean, at the very least, directly above him are first of all Frank Reich, Matt Ryan. You know, those two especially are you know have way more of blame on him. Then I could even, I mean, if I, I would say that he's on the same level as say Kenny Moore, Braden Smith. Mm-hmm. Alec Pierce, I don't want to bang on the guy a lot. He's a rookie making his first game, so it, I'm, I don't want to pull him. Yannick Ngakwe did not have a really good game. Bobby Akariki did not have a really good game. But, yeah, the guy that doesn't make the kick, it's the guy that gets – All the hell. That gets slaughtered, yeah. Yeah, and, and, he, he, and he's going to keep yeah. getting it. And, uh, you know, th- th- that's, my, that's my big thing is, like, you can't, you can't lose your kicker mentally because um, I don't think you replace that. Um, I still think he's like better than what you're probably getting off the street, and <laughs> it sucks. It's just the truth. It's just there's not, it's not kickers waiting, and you yeah, know what I mean. No. There's you, there's you just not have... guys sitting in the wings just waiting to get an opportunity yeah, to and, kick. And you can't you, know, and you can't give up. You can't give up on your kicker like week one after having yeah. him all training camp, having him a training camp battle. You can't give up on the guy right there. So you have to back him up, and you have to back and. You know, like if you look up Blankenship on Twitter right now, you don't see anyone backing him up. It's all like leave that guy in Houston, cut him, get him on the street, like get him off this team. Yeah. Like no one is on his side right now. And I believe that that is like a really crappy excuse to like blame the kicker when you're like, first of all, he was put in a terrible situation to be in. That's a really bad spot. And he should never be in the spot in that game in the first place. Right. And so it's like a, he's being forced into a role that he was probably wasn't anticipating. Right. Yeah. Like are if you're uh an NFL player uh and you take this sport super seriously, you have to play with a certain confidence level. And so he had to go into that game thinking that we were supposed to walk walk all over Houston and found himself Oh, I'm supposed to be carrying our water. I wasn't thinking that I was going to be the, the, you know, and I get it. It sounds like you're making excuses, but like I said, it's far more, it's far better to point at the fact that ask any coach what's more indicative of a losing football team or game, a team whose quarterback throws an interception and has five, four, he had four fumbles and one gave up one or your kicker kicked the ball out of bounds twice and missed a field goal to win the game, which is m- more indicative of a loss. Well, it's the quarterback fumbling cause that shouldn't happen. And it's the quarterback throwing interceptions. Cause that's what we're trying to avoid kickers missing kicks. That's like part of it. That's part yeah. of football. Look at, show me a kicker that never misses. There ain't one. Yeah. So, and now, and now there's even worse kickers than there has been. Right. So unlike the quarterback position in the NFL, which I think is, this is the best that's ever looked. 
Um, the kicking situation is not great. There's plenty of missed kicks all the time. And I get that too, that I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to take away from somebody's poor play by saying like other teams have it just as bad. Uh, but I am trying to point out like, if, if you're getting to the point in a football game where you're putting the win or the loss on a kicker, you're playing losing football. Yeah. So all those people out there that are really upset with Rodrigo Blankenship right now are the same kind of people that like throw food at the person in the drive through, right? That's not the guy that made it kind of not placing blame correctly. The reality is like, it's okay to say Matt Ryan's the reason this was a tie. Yeah. You know what I mean? Let's just call that or, or legitimately you could say like, it's Chris Ballard's fault for not addressing wide receiver. Yeah, throughout the entire off season, now, and we, and it's not like I, I want to like, you know, put the emphasis on that. It's not like we are talking here about the wide receiver position now that the wide receiver position failed. Right. We we've we, been we, talking we were, about. Yeah, it. we've been talking about this. We've been saying like, hey, this this is going to be an issue. This is an area where you are really thin. Where you have Michael Pittman Jr. You have a rookie and you have a guy that played like 10 games over the past four seasons. And then you have just guys that are like practice guys. squad material players. Yeah, guys. You know, they could be great. Could be, you have no proven, you have literally like this one proven receiver. And he's the only one that showed up today. The other, you know, Paris Campbell did not show up. Alex Pierce did not show up. Ashton Dillon did not show up. And it's like, this and, was they're, and they're getting the you know? opportunity it, it was too. not surprising. Yeah. And it's not like we are talking about, you know, when you're saying like, okay, Justin, well, not Justin Jefferson, but like you have a solid guy and he has a bad game, you know, that can happen. But these are guys, like we were saying, these are not talented receivers. These are not proven receivers. These are not starting caliber receivers on a team that has playoff aspirations. Right. And that's the issue with me. Right. Is that if you're like, really being critical, like Ashton Doolin yeah. and Desmond Patton, like Patman, these aren't guys that should be making your roster. Yeah, your practice and it's not squad. like, and it's not like say you had like two injuries or an injury to a wide receiver group, and and it's like okay, you know what can you do about it? You know, it's it's stuff that happens. You had no injuries, you just failed to address the position at all. Right, you didn't, and it was it was really clear last season that we had no weapons, and you know they did not address that. They're forcing that instead of addressing wide receiver, they decided to force. Naheem Hines into sort of an unfamiliar role like a we would call it like a joker role right where he doesn't he's not really running back he's not a split he he played out wide he you know what I mean he ran a little just sweep action you know what I mean D does your motion a little bit um even even was your wildcat quarterback um I think that this is gonna fall on Reggie Wayne that awesome. he was supposed to raise the the floor, raise the ceiling of the of their wide receiver room, and the, and he was him him Alec Pierce, and then them having Naheem Hines play that role was supposed to be the the solve. Uh, yeah, I just think that if you're if there's only three guys, let's say you have a uh, five pass catchers on the field at the same time defensively i can easily cover three every time yeah you're running back your eight your other back your h your slot you can call him whatever you want i call him jokers um yeah. but like naheem hines taylor and Pittman, i can find three people on my football team that can take them away on a third down i can find it and then i can force you to do something else and fortunately today guy like Mo Ali Cox makes a makes a play, right? It, uh, Paris Campbell did have a, a pretty important first down catch. Um we just got to get more like got to have a little more downfield. You know, we're not hitting we're hitting stuff coming back to the quarterback or crossing the field. We're not hitting stuff on the run. Um which is affecting the guy's ability to score you know because it gets harder to score when you get down in the red zone you know it's like i think it's like the hardest thing to do is start first and goal inside the 10 your offense is already limited yeah you, you've got a, you've added a boundary um 
so that mean and they, it basically it puts a natural cap on your on your offensive strategy right and again i also think that it's pretty clear teams don't practice uh situationally like they should um there's such an impetus on safety now that uh, a lot of a lot of the football that i've seen today not just the colts you watch this play and you're like you're not ready to play a physical football game like a violent physical game today you you've you've been in in bubble wrap all practice all summer long not going full speed um and i also think that had that had a lot to do today with like uh for example the penalty where the guy uh launched himself at alec pierce um, yeah that's again that's matt ryan's fault uh he threw your threw your receiver in, under the bus um yeah, that, that reminds, you know, especially since Alec Pierce looks a lot like, you remember Austin Coley? Mm -hmm. <laughs> that, that, that really reminded me of that Peyton Manning, Austin Coley connection. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that's a throw you shouldn't be making. Right. It, well, it's a throw he should have made a lot earlier. If you go back and watch the play, like, if you throw that on his break, he's wide open, and he turns right before he gets anywhere near them guys and probably scores a touchdown, but he padded the ball and then threw it and just let go of it too late and threw him into, a, uh, into the defense. Um, and the reason <laughs> that he did that is because when you're going through training camp reps, they're not hitting Alec Pierce like that. They're, they're stepping out of the way and, and, and we're shaking hands and, and high-fiving and kissing babies and shit. That's why Al that happened today. Cause Matt Ryan hadn't been punished yet. Right. Hopefully he gets yeah. punished in film. Right. When people go, Jesus, Matt, like we paid all that money and trade away the farm. Like let everybody talk all that shit about Carson Wentz. Well, at least he beat Jacksonville week one. You go on a road and play the, the worst Texans team they fielded in the last five fucking years and can't do anything but tie them. And then watch how you played. Look at this. You almost cost us our second round draft pick for the season because you hesitated. It's OK to be the man like you're allowed to be. You're paid to be that guy. Yeah. Right. A lot of these, a lot of these guys are, and like I said last year, I feel like a lot of guys weren't accepting of that role yet. Quiddy Pay, for example, like I said last year, was a couple times where he, he had a quarterback dead to rights, and it was like he couldn't, he couldn't do it, couldn't hit him as hard as he wanted, had had a had to kind of let up on him, you know. And and the same thing with Alec Pierce today, where he the ball is there, and you snatch that bitch out of the air, and you take the air out of that stadium, and we win walking away, right? And instead, yeah. like. Guy, guys are expected to, you're, you're told your whole life as an athlete especially if you're any good to be humble be humble be humble be humble be humble be humble and then you get into the nfl and you get humbled instead of play with a great deal of confidence at all times if you're confident you'll make that catch you'll make that play you'll tuck that ball instead of fumble that shit right you'll grab a hold of that instead of letting yeah. it slip out of your fingers right if if you are ready to step into that role. And I get it. It's week one. That's a big ask, but you spent draft capital on him. You, the impetus is on him from moment one. You're going to be the number two, yeah. you know, Paris, like you said, Paris Campbell's get banged up the whole time he's been here. So he comes in here. He's got to be expected to make those plays. But again, Matt Ryan's also supposed to be playing at a higher confidence level. And if he was doing that, he, again, I think that this game doesn't turn out that way. And, and I also, and I also, want to point out that i'm never going to tell you that a player is lazy and that's why i think it's yeah, more like no. they overwork themselves uh and i think rodrigo blankenship and matt ryan are two people on the colts team that would overwork themselves and put themselves in a position to not have like the the mental framework to just be in the zone at all times um and it's because you overworked it um, and there was there were some throws that Maddie missed on that he normally yeah. won't probably won't miss that throw again. Um, and I think a lot of it has to do with again, like just I, I think there's not enough game situation practice, and there's a lot of like sevens and a lot of like team period and yeah. indie, which is an inside run period where everybody <laughs> on the field knows that you're running the ball. I think that um, if teams you want to overcome putting only 20 points up on one of the worst teams in the NFL, you're going to have to play more football, like full contact play to the whistle, maybe not inside run period, 
but definitely a pass period that's just full contact because you need guys getting lit up when your quarterback hesitates so that the quarterback doesn't hesitate and he lets go the ball earlier and then we score a touchdown and walk out of here blowing these people away because they weren't ready for us yeah and instead we're sitting here talking about how well, a lot of people are going to blame the kicker. No, well, uh, rookie wide yeah. receiver certainly shit the bed a little bit. And it's like, no, it's far more likely that uh, Matt Ryan and Rodrigo yeah, Blankenship might have yeah. just overworked themselves. And uh, that's why he came out and only put up 20 points, even even though he put had like 500-plus yards of offense. Yeah. Uh, and it's and like I, almost unheard of. Yeah, I also wanted to clarify, like, this is not the end of the world by any means. I mean, Frank Reich should not be fired for this tie. No. We, we, I mean, I get it. It's a frustrating. In my mind, it's a loss because it, it hurts like a loss, but it's not a loss. It's a tie. It's a tie. I, I understand that it's really frustrating. I am perhaps more frustrated than anybody. I mean, it, it sucks to be in this position, but it's not the end of the world. The offensive line is not going to play that bad probably never this season Matt Ryan is going to get it together because he's a great player he's a great quarterback he's a guy mm-hmm. that puts in the work he's a guy that can lead this team the defense is going to probably get it together you know they, they are going to perform much better and I believe that you know next week against the I guess Jacksonville in Jacksonville it's a great chance for these guys to show like okay you know last week definitely was a fluke we are a playoff team we are going to exercise our demons here in Jacksonville. We are going to beat the shit out of Jacksonville. And we are going to show you guys that we are still the team to beat in this division. I honestly yeah. believe they're going to do that. Yeah, I said I said the same thing. When when the game ended, I said, you know, I still think the Colts win double digit games here. Huh. Yeah. Crazy to yeah, it's crazy yeah. to be tying a team I was supposed to blow out and walking away from the game and saying, like, no major injuries. Oh, it's great. But yeah, let's not rush into I mean you know, I, I, I was vocal about this in the past. I always had my reservations on, on Reich. I never, I still don't believe he's a guy that can take it to the promised land. But right now, he's the best coach for the Colts to have. Right now, there is no one better than him to coach the Colts right now. So, yeah, I mean, we, we have to support him. He will most likely get this team into the playoffs. Yeah. Like, yeah, I've, I've, I have no doubt about that about his his ability i i do wonder about decision making and and that has more to do with just handling the moment and the stress that comes within the confines of a football game um and and really if you think about what happened otherwise like they were super productive on offense otherwise and outside of again two schemed plays that like had to be pretty new stuff they didn't work on a bunch that the Colts didn't have film on obviously because a new tight end that just got signed by the Texans had two touchdowns on two catches in about the same spot of the field to the opposite side it was the same play yeah right so like I get I get oh Colt, Colts dropped the ball big O tie information is war right so like you're trying to keep information from them. They're trying to keep shit from you. They signed yeah. this guy late. We talked about it on our podcast. They're like, yeah, that's weird. OJ Howard is their second tight end now. Huh? Huh? And it ended up being like yeah. a big deal in the next game. It's like it ma- that ended up mattering, right? So yeah, I and, that- and I also and I and I also want to give like credit where credit is due. The, the Texans, you know, considering their lack of talent. Mm-hmm. They played a really solid football game, you know. Davis oh, yeah. Mills, you know, limiting turnovers, limiting, you know, making no mistakes, hitting where he had to hit. Their their defense, I believe, played, you know, a solid game. Over, you know, considering that they don't have any true talent, they they have. I think that Lavi Smith is a wonderful coach. Yep, he's a really good football coach. He knows oh, his yeah. guys. He knows how to coach a team. So kudos to the Titans, to the Texans. Sorry, also because. They played a really good football game. Agree. I just think they're going to go four sixteen and one. Yeah. So. Yeah, yeah. Or whatever four tw- four yeah, twelve and they, one. They have yeah. They have no. They, they have, have a, no talent. They don't have any staying power. You today, know. They, today they they did play. Uh, they they played really well. And yeah. while we're at it, you know, the 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 Titans are losing against the Giants. They are down one, and they have the ball on the Giants forty eight. So you know, I mean, Titans. Any any given Sunday, right? Yeah, any given. Yeah, 
the, the thing is, you know, the problem that I have is that this, this is an issue that keeps repeating itself with the Colts. And we talked about this, you know, we talked about the fact that we, we keep making the same mistakes. And when you make your, those mistakes, you know, several times you have to start wondering, you have to start pointing fingers at the guys in front. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I, I think before too long, we're, we're going to have to talk about how come no matter who it is, opponents wide receiver one always has a field day against the Colts. Like yeah, organizationally, why can we not just keep your wide receiver one under wraps? We went out and bought a, a corner. Yes, a cover corner. Game more. Yeah. Um, and again, I'm not even, again, that's not even why the Colts did not lose because we failed to cover their number one. But if you think about the productivity that would cooks have, I thought he had like seven catches. Yeah. It was like seven for 80, for 80 yards. Yeah, and like I said, that's not that's not yeah, that's not game winning. Their number one, game that's winning. not winning that. And and Cooks is a really solid receiver. He's a guy that I really like, and a guy that I okay. So the Titans might win this one. They just made one hell of a play. <laughs> yeah, just a great throw at, by Ryan Tannehill to the sideline. Mm-hmm. Damn, I think that, damn that cornerback's old. But yeah, so with with the Titans, right? The the last year's division winner, that's two batted balls out of the last three passes. Um with uh the Titans currently trailing the Giants late. Um this should give anyone some a fresh perspective here. The Colts didn't lose, it was a tie. Jacksonville lost. And Tennessee is currently losing to <laughs> yeah, another they, they, they terrible are, they team. They are in the about league. to kick. Yeah, but they are going to kick a field goal right now, and it's going to be. A, if my calculations are correct, they are about to kick a forty-six yarder for the win. I have the game. I have red zone on my my TV right now. I just got a glimpse of it. It's right now. You know the kick's about to happen. It would be great for them to lose. Like it would be really, really good. Week one, week one was definitely crazy. Yeah, and it's it's not even you know what I mean it's not even it's not even completely halfway over yet. You know what I mean? Like yeah, we, we still have. What is the Sunday night Sunday night matchup? It's Dallas Tampa. Yeah, that's and tomorrow. A really good game. Seattle Denver. Yes, um, Seattle Denver is also going to be a really good football game. Yeah, I, I feel I really feel like the the bookends for week one really good. Right, yeah. like the opening game. Obviously, the score not indicative of like that being a good football game, Jared. But that was the reigning Super Bowl champion versus the favorite to win the Super Bowl to start the week. And then Sunday Night Football, you get two teams that are supposed to win their division or compete for their division in the Cowboys and Bucks, whatever. And then tomorrow night, you get Russell Wilson playing his old team. Well, playing against his old team. Like, I, yeah. I don't know about anybody else. That's fireworks. That's going to – Russell Wilson's already really good. Now Russell Wilson's got weapons and he's playing against his old team. Oh, my God. Like, that's just great. That's great entertainment to open and close the weekend. Um, but, yeah, the like I said, can't get too burnt up about a tie. Yeah. Better than a loss. And you've got Jacksonville who just started their season with a loss, right, next week on the road. Uh, yeah. Another another absolutely stinking winnable beatable team. game. Yeah. Um, and, and and a game the Colts should win. And again, like we've talked about, you know, these first four games are super legit, and yeah. uh, and super important is probably the better word um, because they're division games, and because they're on the road. Those road division games, if you can win those, they have a really good indicator of your success in like the playoffs. Why? frequently in the playoffs you're not hosting yeah yeah travel and so uh if you can win your divi- road division games and again a tie is not a loss so it's like titans eh. titans kicker missed it titans kicker missed it so the titans lost against the giants yeah that's see, fucking good news see so the, Col- the colts aren't the only team in the afc south with kicker woes yeah so yeah 
Yeah, and that's a loss, not a tie. So. And that's a loss, that's a, not that's a tie. A, yeah, that's a silver lining for. <laughs> that's definitely a silver lining. <laughs> Yeah, I think, well, I think the, the silver huge. lining for me for today was there was no major injuries, yeah. right? Um, it, it appeared like the people that started it, started the game were the people that finished. Uh, I think the yeah, only person and... that fell and looked like they got up awkwardly was a coach for the Colts. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that was, like, that was, looks that like, was, was funny, that Moore? Yeah. I think it was Moore yeah. on the sideline got knocked over, but he got hit in the shins and kind yeah. of fell backwards. And I was like, oh, that probably sucked. And then he stood up, he's kind of tender. And I was like, that's as close as we got to an injury today. Yeah, nice. So, and and this is a team that should definitely be better this entire year. So, oh, you sure. know, alarms alarms not going off just yet. I, I get it. It's tough to watch, but just be patient. Give this team at least like four to five weeks before we start. You know, saying oh we should fire Frank Reich. Oh Matt Ryan right. is a bad quarterback. Oh, give it time. Yeah, you it's, know, it's, I, it's I definitely going to take time. I understand the frustrations, but. Give it at least four to five weeks before we're talking about firing the head coach. You know, this common right. sense. Absolutely. Well, hey, this has been episode 34 yeah. of The Cultist. You and I here in our second season together. Uh, I'm really appreciative of you. Uh, yeah, I, I, I think I think it's a hell of a thing to try to do by yourself. Uh, and it ain't so bad when you got somebody with you. And, and of course, yeah, I, I could imagine doing with with, with someone else. Um I just yeah, I, you got you got the right sort of like temperament for our for our kind of convo and we're both kind of saying the yeah. same things which is which is good right ultimately the right things right yeah. so I really and appreciate I you. also I also wanted to give if if I could a quick shout out to my girlfriend who is in Italy right now and she's supporting me a lot so shout out to Lucia Hey hey Lucia <laughs> <laughs> and I'll, I, while I'm at it I'll shout out my wife you know she don't watch my show yeah. anyway <laughs> uh <laughs> Thanks for uh, listening to our podcast, watching the show. Uh, have a great rest of your week, and we'll see you all after next we'll see week's you on game. Next summit, yeah.